The poor voting turnout in the United States elections drastically affects the nation's inhabitants. This was a claim made by our fellow few. They made an assumption that there is a negative consequence to poor voting taking place based on their secondary claims of half the population votes and people are unaware of the actions taking place within the American legal system. They had included a third claim about how the lack of voting caused scandals to take place inferring to bribery and hidden policies, but this claim was dismissed based on lack of evidence and because what was claimed is more of a theory than a fact. Whether or not what appear had stated was true in regards to black money and hidden policies being used, there was no statistical information pre present nor character witness quoted to prove that such scandals were tied directly to poor voting. Poor voting was not a definition in our peers claim of fact speech and thus was left to interpretation. Today I will be defining poor voting as a decline in the number of people voting over the years. My rebuttal speech is based on the arguers' outdated evidence and mainly applying to the main claim that the U.S. has poor voting, which as a reminder will be defined as a decrease in voting. Today we are focusing on the fact whether or not there is poor voting in America. One of our peer support evidence quotes that they have used was being that less than half the population votes, especially youth and minorities. Here is where the first evidence challenge can be made. In their speech, they used the quote from the 2016 U.S. Census Bureau, from the age group of 18 to 24, only in a reported 39% voted versus a 61.3% from the age group 35 to 65. However, the arguer failed to mention that this quote was made in 2012 and that right after the quote stated came, however, in 2016, young voters ages 18 to 29 were the only age group to report increased turnout compared to 2012, with a reported turnout increase of 1.1%. Later in the same article, it stated, quote, overall in 2016, there were about 4.6 million more reported voters than in 2012. This is important to know because it is the first piece of argument information that our peer's argument held and that since 2012, there has been a clear change in voting. Our peer had mentioned that there was a lack of voting numbers. However, according to the Federal Election Commission 2012 data and the 2016 National Popular Vote Tracker containing 2016 data, they stated that in 2012, an average of 127 million people voted during the presidential election of Obama versus Romney. And in 2016, an average of 129 million people voted during the election of Trump versus Clinton. If you do the math, that is an average of 2 million more people voting in 2016 than in 2012. This shows a clear voting increase between 2012 and 2016. Another argument was made that was made was trying to explain that the lack of representation in government leads to minorities' needs being ignored. However, in the same article, my opponent used reflective democracy campaign, they who investigates and disrupts the demographics of power in the United States, when listing statistics in favor of proving that there is a race and gender imbalance within the government, they had conveniently left out that women of color are breaking through. Since 2012, women of candidates for Congress have increased by 75%. And overall, women candidates for Congress have increased 44% since 2012. This quote matters because it shows that change is occurring and minorities are on the rise for changing America. These women and women of color who are considered minorities in politics couldn't have gotten to where they were unless they were voted in and properly represented. If these people are being voted in and the percentage of change in America's politics is increasing, then there isn't a problem with voting occurring. My opponent stated that there are drastic effects on the nation's inhabitants due to lack in voting, yet there is no clear statement or solid piece of evidence made in this argument that proves this which is why today I focus on the piece of whether or not poor voting exists in the U.S. And so far we have heard that voting is increasing and that times have changed since 2012, and which is the, this is the year most of our peers' evidence stems from. <clears throat> Majority of the resources used for the support were from 2012 and 2014, but politics and voting has changed. Even within the sources, the arguer used had clearly stated the differences in growth America has gone through politically and economically since 2014. The main point overall is that our peers' information is outdated, and since 2012 and 2014, there has been a clear and observable increase in people voting. Thus, they cannot claim the poor voting turnout when there is no clear definition of what poor voting is. One could assume that it implies a decrease in voting over time, which is what we went over today. However, the evidence clearly shows an increase in voting as well as an increase in minorities obtaining high political roles within the U.S. government. I am not denying there are drastic effects on the nation's inhabitants to the ends of society. However, I am saying that poor voting is not one of the cause or reasons for it.
Okay, well, you, you've got a general argument about uh, voter turnout and uh, some of the explanation of what the advocates claim is is summarized here. Uh, I don't really get a, a review of what the structure of the advocates argument was, except I think that there are two supporting points, uh, but they're rushed by so quickly that it's not clear that you're going to be responding to them individually or if you're going to give me a collective answer to everything. And I think that that's a little bit of a problem because it's easier to follow something if there's a, a, a stronger structure. You've got a lot of claims, but I don't know that they're being directed at something in particular. Uh, occasionally you make a reference to the information that the advocates cited and then suggest a counterpoint to that. That always helps, but it would have been helpful if, we, if I'd known where those things were in the first place instead of getting them sort of at the last minute. I did think that you had um, you know, a couple of straightforward arguments uh, that address the general claims that the advocates presenting that uh, you know, poor voting is really a uh, subjective term and that uh, your criteria suggests that voting is improving on a regular basis, uh, both in particular groups, which you mention, uh, and in uh, overall uh, turnout, which you have documented at least in the last election. Um, so I, I think you've got some good factual data there that supports the position uh, that you're presenting. The challenge about the relationship to problems as a result of poor voter turnout, I do think you have a reasonable press on a couple of those points. Um, the argument about the lack of representation of minorities, uh, you have women of color and women in general who are participating more in the process and running for more offices, um, which I think is probably a good sign that uh, there is, in fact, a direction that goes in the opposite of what the advocate's talking about, but I don't really know what the advocate's information on that was. Part of the reason that this is problematic is because frequently you've said that they didn't provide any information, but like I, like I pointed out earlier, I think that it would be easier to say that if I knew what the particular claim was that you're referring to instead of the more generic answer here. Uh, you're rushing. There's no reason for you to rush. You had plenty of time. Uh, it would be a little bit clearer if you did that. I thought the summary, though, was pretty straightforward. We've got more people voting. We've got more people voting in these different categories, and the problems that the advocate talks about are not related to turnout. That's basically the argument. Okay. Thank you.